In this video, I want to tell you one of the best ways to go out and catch late summer hot and sticky bass. I'm going to do this for both boat fishermen and bank fishermen. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app. This is an app that really helps you to locate and catch bass a lot quicker. Once you get to the body of water that you're fishing, you can select that lake and the app is going to bring in the current weather conditions. Then you can input data like water temperature, water clarity whether you're fishing around vegetation or not or if you are in a protected or windy area the app will then spit out locations strategies and lures that you can use to attack the body of water and find bass a lot quicker there's a free version and a paid version and if you'd like to download it you can click that link down below in the description Years ago, I was preparing for a Bassmaster Open tournament on Lake Douglas down in Tennessee. This tournament was held in late summer, actually early September. Now, personally, I really like to fish offshore structure. I like finding brush piles and rock piles and ledges that have schools of bass. So I spent the majority of my time during practice looking for offshore structure like brush piles because I thought I could find a big school of bass and win a tournament. After several days of graphing offshore structure, I really had not caught many bass at all. At this point during the practice, I was honestly feeling extremely discouraged. I was like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to catch bass during the tournament. At that point during the practice, I had remembered a quote that I heard from John Cox. If you don't know who John Cox is, he loves to fish extremely shallow water and he really doesn't use his electronics at all. Now the quote that he said came from a tournament where he won $500,000 and basically paraphrasing what he said was that the lake was fishing like crap so I had to get as far away from the lake as possible. Now, obviously in a tournament situation, he didn't mean get in his truck and drive far away from the lake. What he meant is he wanted to get in his boat and drive as far away from the main lake as he could. So that is exactly what he did. He went way up a very small creek and ended up catching a ton of bass. While I was out there graphing and bobbing around in deep water, this kept running through my mind. And I decided to take John Cox's advice because the lake was fishing like crap and I decided I'm gonna get as far away from the lake as I could. Now, the options that I had on Douglas Lake was to basically go up any tributary or creek arm as far as I could. I wanted to get into some shallow water and just try to target a completely different bass. So on Douglas Lake, what this meant was I was going to run as far up the main river of this lake as I could. Now, although you can't get as far up some of these Tennessee rivers in a fiberglass boat like I have as you can in a tin boat, I was still able to get pretty far up the river on this lake. And once I got up into kind of the more river portion of the lake and away from that main body of water, I actually stumbled upon a very small creek arm that had a lot of birds that were in that general area. Now, once I stopped in that creek arm with all those birds, I noticed that there was a ton of bait also in that area. And immediately I started catching a lot of fish. And I'm not just talking about keeper size fish, I'm talking about bigger sized, good quality bass. So after that point in that practice period, I really didn't have much more time to expand, but I knew that I was going to concentrate as far away from the lake as I could. Now in that tournament, I went on to flip and pitch a lot of wood cover. I ended up getting 34th out of around 200 anglers. And I was actually pretty pumped about that because I cut a check and with how difficult my practice was until that point, I really thought that I was gonna be at the bottom of the list. Now, with that being said, I have found that this is a pattern that holds true on a number of different bodies of water across the nation, no matter where you live. I have actually done this exact same thing on Lake Champlain. There was a tournament I fished on Lake Champlain where I really wasn't catching what I thought I could on the main body of water. I actually shot up into a small creek and stumbled upon a pretty big group of largemouth that were way up this creek. I've done the exact same thing down in Florida in the 
middle of summer when it seems so hot and you want to be fishing offshore grass, but then I actually found a small canal that had a little bit of current coming through and there was a ton of bass way up in this small canal. So if you are fishing a lake that is very difficult on the main lake, this is what I highly suggest that you do is try to get as far away from that main lake as you can. Run up certain creeks, run up the rivers, try to get into some shallow, a little bit more stained water. And a lot of times you will find groups or schools of bass in really shallow water. Now, most of the time when you find these schools, they are actually fairly easy to catch. A lot of times you can use topwater baits like buzz baits and frogs, or you can flip and pitch the cover that you see in that area. A lot of times it is not difficult to catch these bass. You just have to find the little sections where these bass are. Now, what I have seen a lot of times is that if you have small bends in a creek arm, on those bends, you're going to have a little bit deeper water. And a lot of times you're gonna have some either rock or some lay downs or some grass associated with those bends in those creek arms. And a lot of times you will find certain sections of those creeks that are holding a lot of bass. Now, obviously I've been talking about fishing out of a boat, but there's a lot of guys that don't own boats. They're bank anglers. And I've been there. I've done a lot of bank fishing throughout my entire life. And I still do a lot of bank fishing because I just really enjoy it. Now, during late summer and early fall, sometimes even ponds can get tough at fishing. And this is when I love to kind of do the exact same pattern that I just talked about for boat fishermen. And I'm going to start fishing a lot of creeks during this time of year. Small rivers, small creeks are a great way to just go out and catch a lot of fish. And I actually will target the exact same type of cover and structure. What I have seen a lot is that if you get into some of these small creeks, whether they hold largemouth or smallmouth, a lot of times when you have these small bends in the creeks, you're going to have just a deeper hole. And that deep hole is where a lot of fish are going to live. And one of my favorite ways to target these fish is with some sort of topwater bait. In creeks, I have fished a lot of ploppers and caught a ton of big smallmouth on ploppers. It's one of the most fun ways to go out there and catch a bass. Now, if those fish are not hitting top waters, a lot of times just dragging some sort of like shaky head crawfish lure or even some sort of finesse jig is a great way to catch bass that are actually in those holes. So as a bank angler, I know that this takes a little bit more commitment. It's not as easy as going to the local pond and catching a few fish, but finding areas where you can access a small creek and then walk up current in that creek is a great way to go out there and just catch a lot of bass. Although late summer can be extremely hot and extremely difficult, if you use these couple of patterns, you can still go out and consistently catch bass. Now, in this video, I talked a little bit about fishing topwaters and ploppers, and I actually made a full video right here all about the big mistakes that a lot of guys make with a plopper. I'm gonna link it right here. If you enjoy this video, I think you'll like this one as well. Please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.